The oud, for the most part, is uh, considered the grandfather of the guitar. This is an instrument that made its way from Iraq by way of Ziryab uh, to Cordoba, Spain, during the uh, Islamic rule of Spain. The oud in the Middle East is predominantly used for melody in what they call modes or scales uh, that are in Middle Eastern music called maqam. And they sound like this. <laughs> A lot of improvisation involved. However, being a guitarist, I also do play certain styles that are similar to the guitar on the instrument. So you can pluck away on chords, strum away. About uh, eight years ago, I was offered a position to teach oud at the Old Town School of Folk Music. And I had no idea what to expect. So when I walked into the first class and saw about 15 students in front of me, I thought, all of you want to learn oud, that's pretty amazing. And what was even more shocking to me was that uh, a great ma majority of them were not of Middle Eastern origin. So it was very fascinating to learn how they understood the instrument, how they came upon the instrument, why they wanted to learn it. And um, everybody had their own very unique story and I thought it was really amazing to see how an instrument served as a portal for them to start learning about a culture, learning about a civilization, about the history of the music from the area. And it really dawned on me the, the power of, of music as a, a gateway to understanding the other or other people. One example is a uh, very famous uh, song, Miss Erlou, which some people might recognize from the movie Pulp Fiction. <laughs> about this is that he's using a Middle Eastern musical mode, a maqam. Dick Dale, who's also known as Richard Mansour, he actually heard his father play that song on this instrument, on the oud. He took it and not only created a rock song out of it, but forged a, an American genre known as surf rock. And there lies an inextricable tie between the Middle East and, and the West. I'm reminded of something my grandfather used to say to us all, always. He said, shughul idada, which means that uh, your worship is in your work. When you work is when you worship. And I took that to mean that whatever you do in life, if you practice, if you're cooking, if you're making a omelet, or you're cutting the grass, uh, there's a meditation to that. There's a contemplative practice to that. that it is like worship, and I truly still look at it that way till this day, that when I go on stage or when I walk into a venue or in the theater, the theater to me is a temple. It's, it's a place where people come for healing, they come looking for answers or discovering new questions. Music, art in general, and artists and musicians are conduits for what happens in the world, and we need to try to reflect that and I think that's the greatest challenge is making sure that we're always remaining true to our art, to ourselves and uh, reflecting the world around us for others to see that.